Welcome and good morning. Today we're going to talk about repeats and re-enables in SAMI, a little bit about how they work and the differences between them. Let's get started. Re-enables and repeats are a way for you to iterate over a certain process or to repeat a process multiple times. They're very similar with really slight differences, so let's talk about those. Repeats, as you can see here, uh, all you enter is the number of times that you want to repeat the process, and then everything inside this gets repeated as quickly as possible with no delay in between until it's over. Re-enables give you an, a repeat interval. This is the delay between each successive repeat and the amount of times you want to repeat over that. Very similar to what you have here for repeat amount, except for re-enable, if you put minus one, it will continuously repeat forever inside this box. All right, so let's comment out this re-enable so that we don't do anything in it. We're gonna set this repeat on top and we're just gonna do a very simple repeat process so you see what's going on here. So what we're gonna do is uh, above this, we are going to add a set local variable. My, my brain kind of lapsed there for a second. And we're gonna call this counter. And we're gonna set counter to be zero. We wanna start it off at zero. And we wanna repeat this process five times before we finish. Inside here, we're gonna do another set local variable. We're gonna say counter plus equals one. So it increments that counter up five times. And we're gonna do a Twitch chat message just so you can see each individual instance of it. Um, chat message, there we go. Send message, send it to Falineer. And we're gonna say counter value and then wrapping in our backslashes and our dollar signs is counter. So this is gonna say counter value and then it's gonna display whatever value is set to the counter variable. So it's gonna do that five times and it's gonna do it very, very, very fast. So let's pull Twitch chat over here so you can see it. Bring you over, there we go. All right, and then we're just gonna hit run button. A reminder that run button will save everything as it exists in your button and then execute it. So it would run as if it was normally triggered through the stream deck or through chat command or anything like that. So we'll hit run button and we'll see counter value one, two, three, four, five. And it posts very, very fast. There's no delay between these. The delay here was essentially Twitch receiving the information. That's what a, a repeat is. And for re-enable, it's the exact same process. The addition that you can add an interval or a delay between each process inside the re-enable is really nice. But I do wanna make sure that you know that if we put a wait for timeout here and set this for one second, it will do this line, do this line, wait one second, repeat, do this line, do this line, wait one second. And we can show that right here. One, two, three, simple process, right? So in this regard, this repeat is now the exact same as this re-enable. So if we uncheck this one, set a repeat of 1000, set this to go five times, copy, there we go paste here, we can say re-enable counter value and then turn these off so the repeat is no longer affected and we don't need the timeout. We can run, re-enable, <laughs> re-enable, okay, <laughs> spelling's hard. So essentially now we've just made these two things functionally the same. So you could take both of these, put it into your button, well, one of them, I wouldn't run both. Um, but you could take one of these, put it in your button, and perform the same process functionally identical. Except one thing that we do need to point out. And that is that repeats, when we hit this purple block, we will do everything inside this block um, and the number of iterations for it before we move on to the next thing. And I wanna show that here really fast. So if we go counting, counting done, all right? So if we hit run button, we're gonna count five times and then we're gonna hit this line right here. There's our one, two, three, so on, and then counting done. If we were to do this with the re-enable, what, what this is gonna do 
is it's going to continue processing command lines beneath it while the re-enable is happening. So if I run it now, we're going to get re-enable one, counting done, re-enable two, re-enable three. You really want to be careful when you use your re-enables because it's still going to process other lines uh, of code, other command lines beneath it while it's doing what it's doing. And if we were to turn this off and open this up, we can see here one last time. Let's go ahead and clear this out so it reads a little bit easier. Here in my chat. Okay. So if we run this, let's make counter one equals zero. We're going to use counter one here. And then let's do another different counter. So we're not utilizing the same number. We're going to call this counter two, counter two, and then counter two. So each one of these is using its own counter, incrementing it up separately. Let's run it. So we have, there we go. So re-enable counter one, immediately followed by counter one, which is inside the repeat. It performs all the functions in the repeat before it then continues to allow anything else to work. So re-enable is currently iterating. Repeat grabs hold of control, does all of its iterations, and then the re-enable is allowed to pick back up with the rest of the lines in the button to continue working. So both of these will let you iterate over information, but I want to make sure that you understand the difference between re-enable and repeat and when you might want to use a repeat over a re-enable. Personally, I like repeats a little bit more. When you add in the wait for timeout, you have a lot of control over this. The last thing I want to bring up here is another command that's relevant to both repeats and re-enables, and that's called the break command. So break will allow us to come out of and then not continue to iterate through either a re-enable or a repeat based on if a certain condition is true. So for example, let's just comment this off so we're not doing the things related to that. If we put a break inside this repeat, and we'll say if counter two is greater than or equal to three break. We've already shown that once everything inside this repeat is done, it will allow other commands below it to continue processing. Uh, what we'll do is if counter two is greater than or equal to three, we will come out of this repeat and no longer iterate through it. And let's demonstrate that. One more time, we'll go ahead and clear this chat out. We'll hit run button, counter one, counter two, counter three, and we're done. So we broke out of this repeat. We will no longer be iterating through it, even though uh, we have set ourselves up to continue iterating through it. Um, this is a really good way if you're uh, running through information, if you have a condition that you want to be met to no longer iterate through it, if you found a specific thing, uh, for instance, then you can give it a point in which it will break out of that. Um, if you leave this bl uh, blank, it will just always break out of it. So we'll hit run button one more time. We have counter one and done. So the moment it got to this bl uh, to this blank space, uh, empty is equal to empty. Uh, it will break out of that every single time. And then you can kind of continue on going through the process of your button. As usual, if you have any questions about this, drop them down below in the video and hit that subscribe button if you like the content that we're putting out here. I appreciate y'all coming in. See you in the next video.